he's having a hard time now. He went, he was too ambitious, he took the foot away and now he can't do it. So one thing to learn kids is don't overestimate your abilities. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another episode with Lattice Training. We're here back at the depot. Obviously you can hear there's some drilling going on in the background and some music. Unfortunately the wide boys, you know them, are starting to set their competition which will be here on the weekend. So keep an eye on their YouTube channel to see that. Today what we're looking at is how to adapt a normal bouldering wall for all of your training sessions that you'll ever need. So we're quite lucky that we're here at the depot, which as you can see is really big. And we've got all these different angles of walls to work with. But we're gonna try and just choose one section of wall because sometimes you not, might not have everything available to you. And you need to be able to adapt any bit of training area just for your needs. So today we're gonna just be choosing an overhanging section over here. And we need to make every bit of session that we possibly need work on that bit of wall alone. Get up. Get up, get up, get up, do the up rock. Get down and shake it when the beat drop. So I'm sure some of you are getting a little bit bored of just watching me climb. So I brought Josh along today to uh, go through some of these sessions with me. Get up, get up, get up. Well, get up. That didn't look hard enough, Josh. I don't think it was. <laughs> we can make it harder. So me and Josh are just going to be using this section of wall. And the first thing we're going to look at is strength and power exercises. So this is using boulder problems and trying to repeat them or project them so that we're working really, really intensely. Um, we've got a section of wall here and me and Josh have just played on all the problems that are already set. There is a couple of different colours as you can see. Uh, the yellow one is a little bit hard for me and Josh to repeat all the time. And then we've got the blue, red, black and purple which are probably a tiny bit easy to actually get that kind of real high intensity workout with. So we're going to make something up and we've had a little play so far and Josh, what have you found so far? Um, I'm going to use the blue and the red and stick in some high heels for some movements which are a bit more difficult on it. Um, so it's got pretty good holds, pretty big holds, but the, the moves are going to be much harder than any of the single problems on the ring. So we've already highlighted a weakness, Josh needs to get better at heel hooking, made a problem up and uh, we'll see if it's quite hard enough yet. Nice. Cool. Hard? Ah, uh, a bit committing on the heel at the top. Um, but yeah, the hardest movements were like really pulling on the heels. Um, all the holds are pretty big, so I think it's forcing that, that area that I wanted to work on for that. So at your local wall, you might have the same problems up for quite a long time, or the same type of holds up. So it's really important to fine tune that even more. So we've got the same problem. Let's make it a little bit harder. So I'm going to ask Josh to use that first blue one. He's going to change where his hand is on it, make it a lot harder. The red one is going to change to the ones lower down. So it's on a smaller hold. And uh, is there anything else we can do to make it a touch harder? Um, maybe take out some feet. Maybe remove this first one to get on. So I've got to pull into it, yeah. So all these little adaptations, you can change, mix up problems, add feet, hold, footholds in, but then also change the way that you actually hold on to hold. So sometimes you might even go from, say if we look at some of these bigger jugs here, you got nice big holds. If you're using the same holds, why don't you just use one section of it? And then if you're really struggling to set something that's just the right intensity and you want to get really specific, go, okay, I'm only going to use two fingers on this hold. It means you can increase the intensity, increase the difficulty, and you've still got the complete set that you've had there uh, until the next uh, bouldering set has been put down. Okay, so am I hitting the top of this blue one or just the side or? The top of it, if you top can. Top of it? Yeah, and then the lower red one. Rock to the rhythm, come. I say rock to the rhythm, you don't stop. Get a funk, got the beat. So you can see exactly the same problem and I've just changed where I can hold the hold and all of a sudden it becomes a project session um, which is perfect if that's what we're after so it's really good just to think about these fine tuning things that can make the difference. Oh. Oh. Getting closer. closer. <laughs> is it like a bat down sleeping bag thing? It's, it's an expedition suit isn't it? Like... Oh. 
it's like quite slopey unless you really get to the back of it. He's having a hard time now. He went, he was too ambitious, he took the foot away and now he can't do it. So one thing to learn kids is don't overestimate your abilities. <laughs> You're just slagging me off that I'm not resting enough. <laughs> Alright, get the catch. Another tip is to know when you've been defeated and move on. <laughs> there you go, you choked. Thieving. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ollie Tour. Is he there in there, isn't it? Yeah. Here we go. Go on. Rock to the rhythm, go. I said rock to the rhythm, you don't stop. Cause ghetto funk has got to beat the show shot. I said rock to the rhythm, you don't stop. So who the squad that'll make the house drop? Ghetto funk with the rhythm, you don't stop. Cause the squad has got to beat the show shot. I said rock to the rhythm, you don't stop. So who the squad that'll make the house drop? Ghetto. That's right. <laughs> ah, safe mug. <laughs> I gotta do it now. Like. Unfortunately, the rest of this video is just going to be me trying that problem. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> we'll let you off. Flexible. Sweet. So that is quite a good example of just how to adapt to one problem. The reason why we're showing you this is if you are using the same boulder problems that have been set for a while, you can make them harder or easier and you can adapt them for your needs for a strength and power session. So next thing is let's look at extending the boulder problems if we're doing any anaerobic capacity training, so 14 moves. And most of the problems here are about five to eight moves long. And how do we adapt that so that we can get much fitter anaerobically? What I'm looking for now is working this anaerobic capacity training. So easiest way to improve this is you add in a couple of moves at the start of a problem. So say this black one up here is around six, seven moves long. So a really simple way for me to try and increase the length of that is to traverse into it at the start. So that might be using some of these other holds to get into the start of that problem. So you can see on that black problem there, it's seven moves long if I just did it on its own. And I've added around five to six moves at the start, which for me, uh, it's gonna add in that little bit of extra powering out. So by the time I get to the original problem, I'm already building up a little bit of waste product and I'm already pushing my forearms. So it means I'm gonna get much, much fitter in that short end power endurance, which a lot of people need to improve. Another option that you can use, same bit of wall now, is rather than traversing into a set problem, it's making one up. This one takes a little bit more time, but it's sometimes more worth it. Uh, so for me, if I'm looking to improve any sort of like power endurance where I'm having to clamp and hug, what I'm gonna do is go in from the start, low down, as far down as possible, and then traverse in and just use a mixture of the smaller holds where I'm having to keep hugging all the way up. Same thing again, I'm looking for that extended boulder, so 14 moves, usually where most of the boulders are around five to eight moves long. So the yellow one for me is a really good compression problem on its own which I might use for doing like a more of a strength and power stimulus but 
because it's not quite long enough to get really powered out on, I've added this traverse in the start and added in a couple more holds, which individually are a bit easier on the way up, but it just means I'm having to hold on much longer. So as you can tell by the end, I'm breathing hard, my biceps, my arms are powering out, but I'm just constantly having to hold this position for longer because this is in line with sort of grip problems that I'm trying to do at the moment where they're a bit longer. It's actually a short trad route and it means I'm going to get much bigger anaerobic capacity stimulus than just doing the problems on their own. So right now we're going to go through setting for power endurance or aerobic power. The easiest way to do this is set circuits combining a number of boulder problems you've already got set on the wall. So this is going to essentially make you quite pumped and have that really fatiguing work uh, without taking any rest and stepping off the wall. Uh, here I've got four different boulder problems I'm going to combine together. I'm going to use other footholds and other holds if I need to to get around. Um, but the main aim is to combine 30 to 40 moves without stepping off the wall. There you go, perfect intensity, getting pumped towards the end. So you can see there during this like aerobic power, and we're calling it that because it's about pushing the aerobic stimulus. So when you get really, really boxed on routes, so trying to get much fitter, that high intensity, sustained, um, unsustained kind of climbing. What Josh has done there, done a hard problem up, easy one down, hard problem up, easy one down. Um, easy way to make it a little bit harder, just make the down climbs like slightly more difficult, take a couple of holds out, or make the upwards ones into harder problems. So he could have traversed along the bottom and gone into a slightly harder problem at the end. Uh, but the main thing is look at the length of sort type of routes that you're trying to improve for, and then set a load of problems which link to about the same sort of moves. So if we're going to go out in Spain in a couple of months time, doing around 40 moves or the amount of time that you're on the wall should link in with that. Uh, but as you can see, he's getting kind of boxed and uh, that's the aim of the session. So we've now gone through hard bouldering session using this bit of wall, mixing up problems, uh, anaerobic capacity, which is that short end power endurance, trying to get powered out like longer boulder problems or crook sequences. Uh, we've gone through the pumpy bit, aerobic power, which is training for roots and sustained climbing. And now if we're looking at aerobic capacity, which is base endurance, so nice and easy plodding or like mixed intensity. So you're on and off the wall, but you try not to get too pumped. Obviously you can see it's actually quite a hard wall for this and a lot of people struggle with this session at bouldering wall. One option is just to do loads and loads of different boulders with a short rest in between because you're going to be on and off the wall quite frequently and you get a little bit of pump but not too much. However, it's really good to get used to actually staying on the wall for a long amount of time. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. One is to focus on these problems which have got bigger holds on and just going up and down these or linking them together. So I can link in the blue and black, which is okay for me. Um, however, first of all, it's a little bit boring. And secondly, it might just be a little bit too hard for you. So a really good way of cheating all of this, and you do look a bit funny at the wall doing this, I admit, is you're gonna be able to link problems by traversing with your feet on the floor. So to begin with, I might wanna work my way over to this back problem over here, but if you just keep your feet really close to the ground or close to the back of the wall, so most of the weight's on your hands, and then you're going to sort of traverse into the problems as if you're on like a nice easy climb, and it means you can really mix up the intensity. And then when you reach the problem that you're wanting, that's when you can step onto the wall. And by doing that, it just means when you come back down after another climb, is you can do the same principle. <laughs> and traverse back over and start another problem. So he slowly made my way across and he does look a little bit funny traversing the bottom with your feet on the floor but it just means every time I'm starting to get a little bit too pumped because I'm trying to train endurance not power endurance 
I'm just going to put my feet on the floor, walk them outwards if I'm getting a bit too boxed. Means I can recover and then start climbing again. So just monitor that pump level and you can manage it really well. In this aerobic capacity endurance style training, you can do a couple of different options. If you're doing really long time on the wall, you want to be looking at around five minutes on, around three minutes off of rest. And that means really slow, nice, easy for five minutes, and then have around three minutes rest. You can choose a different bit of wall or the same bit of wall and then go back on for five minutes. If it's a really busy climbing wall and a bouldering wall in the evening, try and mix it up. So ask everyone around you, say, is it all right if I just traverse along the bottom? And just make sure that you're constantly moving so you're not in people's way all the time. Um, but it's a really, really good stimulus just to be on there for a long amount of time because realistically, most sport climbing routes are going to be over five minutes long anyway. So you need to get used to that amount of time on the wall. But just remember, don't get too pumped. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that's some useful information about how to use a small section of a bouldering wall to train every aspect of your climbing performance. Um, if you have any further comments you want to make or questions about this, just write it in the comments below, uh, just so that we can give you a little bit more details. Remember there's loads of these sessions on the Crimped app, so if you download that, a lot of what we're talking about is on there, so you can just follow that with interval timers already integrated in. And keep in touch with the YouTube channel because we'll be releasing more of these in the next few weeks.